I think it's one of the most gutless, vindictive and petty things I've ever seen in English sport. Uh, Kevin Peterson was directly told by Andrew Strauss's incoming boss, Colin Graves, ECB chairman, that if he wanted to get back in the England team, he had to go back to a county and play county cricket and score runs. That's exactly what he's done. He's up to scored runs. He's currently averaging over 200. He scored 355 not out in his recent innings, which ended this morning. Uh, he's in the form of his life, according to him. And yet Andrew Strauss has shut the door that was opened by Andrew Strauss's boss. So understandably, Kevin Peterson feels extremely let down, betrayed, and I believe he, he thinks he's been lied to. You've spoken to him today. I have. I've, I've spoken to him throughout this process and you know, he told me three or four days ago that Andrew Strauss and Tom Harrison, the uh, new ECB uh, boss under Colin Graves, wanted to see him and we both agreed it could only be for one reason and that would be to rubber stamp the previous ban because Andrew Strauss has made no secret of his hatred of Kevin Peterson and all he stands for. But the bottom line is Kevin Peterson gave up a very lucrative IPL Indian Premier League contract to come back to Surrey and play for nothing. All his salary is going to his Cricket Foundation, which is a charity. And he's done that because the, the boss of the ECB said to him, if you do that and score runs, you're back in the running for the England, uh, the England batting lineup. Well, what more could he have done? He's just scored one of the highest scores in the history of cricket. Uh, and yet the first reaction of Andrew Strauss was to say you will not be playing this summer. I think most reasonably minded cricket fans in this country will share his sense of outrage. Strauss says there's still a question of trust. There is a trust issue because he uh, tweeted against uh, and uh, texted against his England colleagues when he was playing for England. And of course subsequently he wrote that autobiography which made it pretty clear uh, what he thought of a lot of his colleagues. Well, all these cricketers write books. Graham Swan wrote a very contentious book and carried on playing for England for years afterwards under Andrew Strauss. So one rule for him, one rule for Kevin Peterson. Kevin Peterson's book was a direct response to the tissue of lies that the ECB deliberately leaked to favoured journalists uh, the months after he was sacked to try and justify what they'd done. We were told there was a dossier of 50 misdemeanours that uh, Kevin had committed in Australia. Not one of them has actually been borne out by any substance or fact. There were no misdemeanors. There is no reason why he was sacked other than certain people in that team were jealous of him and didn't like the cut of his jib. Well, frankly, if that is a reason to not play professional sport, well, England would have half a team in almost any of the sports that we have national teams in. But do you think his colleagues in the team could play with him or trust him? I think most of the young players in the team love Kevin Peterson. If you took Joe Root aside or you took Balance aside or you took Bell aside, you take some of the others in Australia like Carberry, uh, they all talk very highly about Kevin Peterson. The problem has only ever been with a small clique of players at a senior level led by Broad and Pryor and others. And let's not forget that trust is a two-way street. Some of that team last year or a year and a half ago uh, started a, a bogus Twitter account which ridiculed and mocked Kevin Peterson on an almost hourly basis. So when it comes to trust, this is not just a question of Kevin Peterson, it's a question of the other players in the team who were vindictively going after him too. And Andrew Strauss knows that but has chosen to ignore that. Some of the perpetrators, like Stuart Broad, are still in the England team. So there seems to be one rule for him and one rule for everybody else. And Kevin Peterson, at the end of the day, remains England's best and most explosive batsman, as we have seen in the last 24 hours with this incredible innings. Most of the best sportsmen in the world have come out today after Andrew Strauss's statement and said, what on earth is going on? This is down to bad management. Kevin Peterson should not be dropped from the England team because Andrew Strauss doesn't like him. He should be dropped because he's not good enough. And nobody thinks he's not good enough. Do you think Peterson has changed? Has, his, has he grown up a bit? Has his character changed? Has he become uh, more amenable to being a team player as a result of what's happened to him in recent months? Well, this whole mythology about him not being a team player, Kevin Peterson was part of the most successful team that England cricket has ever had over a 10-year period. But what does being a team player mean? When Manchester United won the treble in 1999, two of their main strikers, Teddy Sheringham and Andy Cole, didn't exchange a single civil word to each other in the entire season. Who cares, frankly, if they're all happy campers singing love songs to each other in the dressing room? I couldn't give a monkeys. 
I want them to score runs and beat the Australians this summer. And we have a better chance of beating them with Kevin Peterson than without him. Now, has he changed? I think he's got a bit older. I think he's got a bit more mature. I think he's accepted some of the things he did, perhaps you know, rub people up the wrong way. But he hasn't fallen out of nightclubs drunk. He doesn't take drugs. He's a great father. He's a great husband. He's the hardest trainer in the team, and nobody can test that. He's never done anything on the pitch to bring the England shirt into disgrace or ignominy. And so the question remains, what has he done that's so bad that means he can't play for his country other than annoy Andrew Strauss? I mean, his critics are saying that there are other English batsmen who are scoring centuries and therefore it's crowded at the top. Well, why don't we ask the Australian fast bowlers who they would least like to see coming in in the middle order for England this summer? And the number one person they would least like to see is the guy who, let's not forget, was the top scorer in the last Ashes series, and that's Kevin Peterson. He was the top scorer and then got sacked. I felt at the time that was utterly ridiculous. I remain of that view. English cricket has collapsed since Kevin Peterson left the team after 10 glorious years of success. And frankly, it's time that the petty, vindictive egos of the English cricket ball were put to one side and the interests of the England team, the country and the fans that pay these guys wages were put first. Does Peterson, or indeed do you, think there's any chance that he will make it into the test team this summer? I think there is zero chance of Kevin Peterson making the team if Andrew Strauss is in charge with this blinkered, bigoted view of him. So my solution would be if we lose against New Zealand, which we might easily do in a couple of weeks' time, and we lose the first couple of tests against Australia, which we might easily do, I would fire Andrew Strauss and bring back Kevin Peterson. Uh, because this is personal. It's not about cricket. It's not about Peterson's ability. Even Strauss admits he's a fantastic batsman. Uh, but the idea that a man can score 355 runs and then be taken into a room by Andrew Strauss and told, you're not playing this summer for England, is utterly ridiculous. Piers Morgan, thank you for joining us.